Hello, my friends. I've been getting a lot of questions here of late regarding the technical aspects of the videos I publish on this channel. Things such as what software do you use, what microphones do you record on, and so forth. So I thought I would throw together a video detailing my entire VR video workflow process. Uh, that's a mouthful, but you get the idea. <laughs> the details of the recording and the editing and so on. Um, so, let's begin with uh, the recording. I guess I should start with our space because um, we have kind of a tiny apartment and we like to keep things neat and tidy. So we have the working desk and the VR play area. You may notice that the VR PC on the floor here is as close as it can possibly be to the VR play area. And that's really nice because that way there's plenty of slack and plenty of cord for moving around the room. You may also notice that there is no monitor for this PC. My main workhorse is this MacBook Pro. This is what I use for all of my real world work as a freelance animator. And so I didn't want an extra monitor here because like I said, we try to keep things tidy and nice as much as we can anyway. And so this is a headless setup for a PC. I think that's the term. We achieved that by having a dummy plug on the back of the PC in the DVI port. It fools the PC into believing there's a monitor attached when there really isn't. I use the PC via Team Viewer. It's a remote desktop application and it's free for personal use. You can use it to remote into any PC that you own. So I use that to remote in and control the VR PC. I use that to sometimes remote into my dad's PC to help him with technical issues. It's a fantastic piece of software and if you're looking to remote into any machine, I recommend it. So, getting to the recording side of things, we have a little basket on top of the PC, which is where I store the Vive and the controllers, again, to keep things tidy. Which brings me to the additional microphone I have installed on the Vive. What's going on here is the built-in microphone for the Vive is fine for playing games and chatting multiplayer, but when it comes to recording videos and having nice quality voice audio for Let's Plays, the Vive microphone does not cut it. So I have this additional lavalier microphone attached to the side of the Vive. The way it's connected begins at the spare USB port on the Vive itself. I use the HTC branded USB extension cable plugging into there and running to here. Now it doesn't have to be the officially branded USB cable. I use that because it just fits so nicely inside the spare port, but if you find a small enough end on a cable, that'll work fine too. One other thing to note about this cable is that it actually came uh, twice the length of this. The extension ends here. By default, it's twice this length. So we soldered the cord, you can see where we patched it here, to be this specific length because at its default length, we had all kinds of spaghetti going on here. Now granted, there is plenty of spaghetti happening now, but it was much, much worse with a longer cable here. And this just felt so much more tidy with it ending in Velcro on this little like platform on the deluxe audio strap. It just fits nicely on there. So plugged into this guy is a USB to audio jack converter. Originally, I did try a straight to USB lavalier microphone, but I was getting all kinds of weird hissing and audio artifacts and it was driving me crazy. So then I decided to just go with this. It is one more extra thing to have on the headset, but it's incredibly light and it works so much better audio quality wise. So this guy plugs into here and then we got a little bit of tidying Velcro here as well. Velcro is amazing. I love it and then the microphone plugs into there. Okay, and so from there, we have the lavalier microphone bundled here and then taped and uh, stickied to the side here. We did try to, so well I should say, we first thought about soldering this lavalier microphone cable so this would be shorter as well, but the audio cable here is so thin and small that uh, it was beyond our skill. So we just bailed on that. That would be nice to have one day, but whatever, you can't have it all. So that's the additional microphone on the Vive for the Let's Plays. Let's get to the actual recording. This is the webcam that I use. The link to this is in the description below, as usual. It's just a simple camera attached to a flexible arm that is attached to the desk. So now to the heart of the recording through OBS Studio. Let's fire that up here. 
Okay, and <laughs> I'm sitting in front of the webcam. Normally the webcam would see the person playing VR, so my apologies. Instead of you getting to watch a beautiful woman play games, you have to look at me again. So, apologies for that. OBS is a free application and it's fantastic. I'm not going to get into all the details of OBS. This isn't a tutorial for OBS. There's many more resources for everything you can do inside this application. But I'll show you the things that I've tweaked for my workflow in recording. And so let's get into the settings real quick. We'll start there. Settings, output. This is the biggest change I made so far. Output mode advanced, so that way I can specify four channels of audio. Recording format is MKV because even though MP4 is my preferred video codec of choice with recording and editing, it comes with some issues, and OBS outlines it here. Basically, if recording is halted somehow, like your PC shuts off or some other glitch, the MP4 video will probably be lost. So instead, record an MKV, that way if recording is cut off short, you still have a file preserved and usable. Now, I haven't had this happen to me yet, so it's possible that's not true, but from what I've read and understood, this is the case with MKV files. So to convert MKV to MP4, that's a step in the process after I'm done with OBS, and I'll be getting to that soon. Uh, bitrate, I choose constant bitrate and a bitrate of 5000. Let's go into the video tab. My base canvas resolution is 1280 by 720. Now obviously if it was 1920 by 1080 that would be a larger video, but there's a big reason why I choose to record at 720 and not 1080. But before I get to that, I should show you how I capture the VR gameplay because that's an important part of why the video size is what it is. Inside OBS, the VR gameplay is captured via the OpenVR plugin. Here you can see the entire left eye. I record with the left eye because the webcam is in the bottom left corner, but you can capture right eye if you want. You can choose crop presets if you want. But this OpenVR plugin is fantastic. It uh, records it clean and nice and it's easy. I love it. So let's get to why I record in 720. If I go into File, Settings, let's change this to 1080. Now obviously my, the webcam is smaller in this canvas size. Uh, let's ignore that for now. I'm just gonna drag that out of the picture. Because the main point is the OpenVR capture, the size that it records is too small to fill a 1920 by 1080 frame. No matter where you move this, you're gonna get some kind of a crop edge based on what the eyeball sees. Now, the obvious solution to that would be to scale up the capture, which we can do. We can click and drag to scale it up to make it bigger. But doing so defeats the whole point of having a bigger video. As well as when you scale it up, you're distorting and blurring and manipulating the capture, albeit subtly, but it's there and the computer has to process it and think about it. So. In my view, it's a waste of effort and you're just defeating the purpose of having a bigger video capture. So we can quickly go over the audio channels. I record four channels of audio. The lavalier mic that I mentioned before is the main microphone channel and the desktop audio is the main audio channel for the game. But I record two backups as well, just in case. I do record the microphone from the Vive, even though it's not as good. I record it as an emergency backup, just in case the main microphone fails. And I also record uh, the audio coming out of the graphics card as a backup for the game audio, in case the main game audio fails for some reason. Now, thankfully, I haven't had to do that yet, but if I ever have to, there it is. So after I'm done recording, I need to convert these MKV files into MP4 files because Adobe Premiere Pro doesn't play nice with MKV files. So to make this conversion process a little easier for myself, I have two custom written batch files. The first one, upon double clicking it, will open a command line and automatically convert all MKV files into MP4 files. 
the second batch script will automatically subfolder them. It'll create two folders with today's date, and then it'll put the MP4 videos into the main folder and the MKV files into an MKV folder as backups. I admit that the things these batch files do for me are a little trivial, but doing these little processes over and over again does eat up a lot of time, and these batch scripts running them have saved me many hours and make my life a lot easier. The batch file that creates subfolders and organizes the files doesn't need anything external to work, but the mp4 conversion batch file does need ffmpeg installed on the machine to work. ffmpeg, like the previously mentioned software, is really powerful and beyond the scope of this video to get into details about it. But it's a free tool to download and I recommend you check it out. I'm going to be providing both of these batch files available for download in the video description below. So if you're interested in doing more batch encoding or automation for your process, you can download these files and hopefully they'll give you a head start with your own workflow. Now to discuss how I do all of the voiceover recording. And fortunately I have at my disposal the most advanced soundproofing technology known to man. A closet. If you're trying to do any voiceover recording on a budget and you don't want to get fancy padding or whatever, you can usually just tape up blankets or speak into a coat closet or clothing closet. Um, usually that's just good enough in absorbing sound and reducing room echo. Uh, to give an example, uh, this is me speaking in a regular room and this is me speaking into the closet of clothing. Now, albeit this is with a different microphone, but I think you get the idea. Um, and speaking of, for the voiceover recording, I use a Zoom H4n handheld recorder. Works pretty well. So, that's the voiceovers. Blah, blah, blah. So, here we are inside Premiere Pro. I use Premiere Pro for my video editing because in my uh, real life work, I use the Adobe package for all of my video production, mainly After Effects and Premiere. So, Premiere is what I'm familiar with, so that's what I use. So here in the timeline, I have my recording of a Skyrim Let's Play and all four channels of audio. But uh, thankfully, channels one and two did not fail me, so I can delete the backup channels. With that done, I'm just gonna show you two tips that have saved me a ton of time in editing videos. The first one is a companion application called Quick Keys. Let's switch to that. Quick Keys is an automation program that will let you record or specify a series of actions that you would do, and it will do it automatically for you with one keystroke. For example, this shortcut here, if I press, um, forward slash or backslash, I can never tell what those are, but this key will execute all of these actions for me, which obviously pressing one key instead of six or seven does save you some time. Let me give you an example of that. So in this sequence here, I'm talking to a soldier in the game, and then I say a little oops while he's talking. And try not to lose track of oops. time. Oops. So I'm talking over him during that point, and so I want to remove that. Let's expand our audio tracks here so we can see better. Normally to do that, I would have to select where, oh, actually I need to unlink these. Forgot to do that. Unlink, okay. So normally I would have to select the track, Command K, drag to before that clip, and then Command K, select, delete. Which, you know, that doesn't take a ton of time, but doing that dozens of times for an hour long let's play really adds up. So instead, I have this quick keys action that I showed you. So all I have to do is go ahead of it, click, hit the forward slash, and then does it. So that saves me one or two seconds each time I do it, but over the course of a let's play and after dozens and dozens of videos, all of that time really adds up and saves me a lot of time in the long run. Unfortunately, Quick Keys is a Mac-only application. I don't know offhand of any Windows equivalents, but I imagine there has to be something like this available for Windows. And now to my second tip. After using Premiere for many years, this is a feature I've only recently discovered, and that is the Audio Track Mixer Timeline Effects. In this panel, you can set effects and automation for the entire audio track through your entire timeline. And the reason that's great is because 
Let's find an example of where I talk quietly and then talk loudly. Okay, here's a good example of this where I'm talking at a normal volume and then after that I begin talking in a much quieter volume. So in the past, to fix that, to make the audio more equalized, I would need to manually keyframe and then by hand adjust any point where I would talk quietly or too loudly to try and equalize all of the voice track. So here I've increased manually the volume of that part. So now it's a little more equalized. And that is pretty painstaking for an hour long Let's Play video. So I was so delighted to find out these automated dynamics processing effects can be applied throughout the entire track. So I have here in track two, a dynamics processing effect. And if I right click and hit edit, you can see it in action here. This automatically raises the volume of the quiet parts for me Whereas in the past, I used to do it by hand. And this has been a lifesaver. I am so happy I found this because I can't tell you how much time I spent adjusting the volume of the voice track during Let's Plays. So this is fantastic. And to top it all off, I have a hard limiter effect. Having this effect in the master track Make sure the volume never gets too loud and the volume never clips or distorts in the video. So even, uh, actually let's make a, an example here. If I turn this off, and let's say I go crazy. None, sir. We persuaded him, we threatened him, we even beat him. Still wouldn't talk. So yeah, you can see these red dots, which means that the volume is too loud and it's getting distorted and it's sounding kind of nasty. Yes, sir. But if I put the hard limiter back, so as you can see with that in place, we never got those red dots, which means we're never clipping. So discovering these audio track mixer timeline effects have been a godsend. These are amazing. And I'm going to provide my default template Premiere Pro project for you to download. So if you do have Premiere Pro, you can look at these effects and see how they work. So there you have it. That's my entire VR video workflow as of today. So hopefully this was informative and useful and if you're hoping to do things like this, I hope you got a jump start on your personal workflow for how you'll be doing things. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer your questions. And in fact, I'm gonna expand that, ask me anything down below because I'm considering a Q&A type video in the future. And so this could be a perfect starting point for that. All of that to say, anything you wanna know, ask me below in the comments and I hope to do a big answer your questions video coming up in the future. So thank you again for watching and we will catch you later, all right, bye.